Okay, so board games using interactive presentations. And I'm really excited about this one. Um, just before we dive in, I'll be using Google Slides. And just because I'm used to uh, working in Google Drive, I have everything organized nicely in G Suite. Uh, obviously, you can do these presentations with Genly or uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, uh, whatever suits you best. Uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to Danny Kildran from Villalba, Madrid, who shared this idea with me about two years ago using a board game that we're actually going to take a look at in this video, uh, Me Want Cookies or Galletas. Um, thank you, Danny. Uh, I hope you like what I have to share. Also, I'd like to mention that we will be talking, all of everything that we'll be talking about has to do with game based learning and using games in the classroom setting has nothing to do with gamification, not even close. Um, it's more about uh, what using games has to offer uh, to the learning process. So let's dive right in. The first game that we'll be taking a look at is Boggle. Boggle is a classical board game, uh, fairly old. Um, it's a set of dice that have letters on each face. And basically what you do is you roll the dice and you set them up like you can see here in the presentation and players are supposed to make or create as many words as they can connecting the letters okay uh, now I've spent a couple years using an online generator um, but the reason why I started creating them in slides is because I can tailor the letters to whatever specific vocabulary we're talking about in the classroom so let's take a look at this real quick Boggle, um, the way Boggle is played is you have to connect uh, letters, for example, sand, okay, band, call. Um, notice that the uh, connections can go any which way. They can go in diagonal, uh, up, down, left, right. The only condition is you cannot reuse any of the letters. Um, so players have about two minutes. I put a two-minute timer here. Uh, so when you project this, at the front of the classroom, each student has their notebook or their piece of paper. They can sit at their desks and teams, uh, however you want to set it up. Uh, you play the timer and they have that amount of time to find as many words as possible. Now, I've copied and pasted the exact same uh, letter setup and added a slide just below. And what will appear are words that can be found within the letters. Now this obviously is optional, uh, teachers don't have to use this if they don't want, but I like to use it uh, to kind of reflect with kids to see what words they found, um, maybe show them words that they didn't find, or make them feel better about themselves and pointing out words that the teacher didn't find. Uh, you don't have to find all the words and set them in there, it's just kind of, kind of get things going. Uh, I've added uh, words in Spanish, words in English, I mean it doesn't matter what language um, you're dealing with in, in the classroom and that's basically the setup okay uh, this presentation has three games all right um, I encourage teachers to make a copy of this you can get it from from the website you can get down in the description of the video uh, just make a copy of this because what's nice about this and what's different from using the online generators is that you can control what words can be found I mean this is tremendous for learning. You can add specific vocabulary. I mean, you don't even have to be playing this game in a language class anymore. It can be in science. It can be in math. It, you, can, you can do whatever you want. I mean, it's going to take a little time to, you know, set up the letters in, in ways that the words can be found. But once you get the, the rhythm of it, I mean, you can knock these things out uh, easy peasy. Now, I've included two uh, slides in the beginning that are hidden uh, so when you project this they won't be seen all right it's just for the teacher or whoever is going to be using the 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 game all right oh, those shouldn't be seen uh, thought they're hidden well oh. and uh, just make sure those are hidden if you're going to use this in the classroom uh, it just kind of goes through some of the the rules there's a link to uh, boardgamegeek.com where they go into more detail about the game and just a couple of ideas here and how you can reuse this, adapt it, 
I mean, make, make this yours and play Boggle in the classroom. It's a great way to get all the kids uh, engaged. I mean, by projecting this, you can have everybody playing at the same time. You don't need five or six different sets of the game to get small little groups. Everybody can play at the same time. You get them concentrating. You get them playing with language. Uh, I mean, it's just a great, it's a great way to start a class. Um, and, 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 and have some fun learning. So yeah, I mean, go for it. Uh, so the next uh, game that we'll be taking a look at is one, two, three, now you see me. So this next game, <clears throat> uh, one, two, three, now you see me, or un, dos, tres, ahora me ves, um, is a really fun game. Um, it's a game, it's a board game that comes with a bunch of little wooden pieces. Uh, the way the game is played is there's one game master and that game master throws out all the pieces on the table. Now in the box, there's some extra pieces and we'll, how the game goes is all the other players uh, need to study the way that the, the figures are thrown out on the table and then they close their eyes for about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. If you want to make the game more difficult, they close their eyes for longer. Right? And then while the eyes are closed, uh, the game master decides to do one of four things. They can change two, uh, two of the figures' uh, positions between themselves. They can move one figure. Uh, they can take away one of the figures or they can add one of the figures. Right? Um, and then the players open their eyes and each player guesses on what happened. I mean, it guesses about what happened. Um, so my inspiration for making this was using hyperlinks within presentations, linking buttons from slide to slide. Uh, I came across this in a blog entry by Alice Keeler, uh, talking about how to make choose your own adventure slides, which I've created some. It's, it's really fun to do. And I realized that you could use these hyperlinks for so many different things. And so what I've done is I've created this huge presentation I mean, there's almost a hundred slides, right? Uh, so that we can play this game over and over again, right? So in this first slide, right? A, again, we have the same benefits. You can project this into the front of the classroom. All the students can play at the same time. The teacher can be the game master or one of the students can be the game master. It doesn't matter. Students study what's on the, the slide and then they close their eyes. And the Game Master can choose one of four things. Now notice, each one of these buttons has a different hyperlink. Let's say they want to uh, add a figure. Uh, when it's presented, just by clicking on that button, it would take us to slide 68. Notice that a small little crane was added, right? Um, now from this slide, that you can play again. Students would open their eyes, everybody would guess about what happened. They would study the new setup, and then we'd go after it again. The game master would decide. Let's say they want to move one of the figures. So you'd click on move. That takes us to slide 74. Okay. It won't let me because of the camera there. Well, let's remove one. Slide 79. Okay. So one of the figures disappeared. Then we can play again. We'll add one. It'll take us to slide 83. Okay. And one gets added. Now, and this gets out of hand really quickly as far as like ramifications and, and which way the game can go. So there's only three rounds uh, programmed into this template. Okay, but you could go back to, to the beginning of the game and play again. Let's take a look at what this looks like um, presented in presentation. This is what would be projected in the front of the classroom. Okay, um, and let's see, let's take a look at how it would go. Uh, let's say the game, so the students would study this setup and the game master chooses to take away one of the figures. Huh? Then they'd open their eyes, they would see this, and they'd have to identify uh, what happened. Actually, let's do a little, let's do a little test. Eh? Everybody uh, study this for about five seconds. Now, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. I'm watching you. Keep them closed, keep them closed, keep them closed. Okay. Now open them. What do you think happened? Well, I hit the move button. 
this vulture moved from this position to over here. All right. Then we have one more play. We could do any of the different options. Okay. And by now, you'll see that we're at the end of the, we're in slide 57, we're at the end of one of the routes, okay, and we wouldn't be able to play it anymore. Now, you can keep going with this, keep creating uh, hyperlinks. Um, it makes for a quick uh, way to introduce the game. Um, the game master doesn't have to think about what to do. I mean, obviously, um, you could play this game with just one slide and have the game master when the students close their eyes i mean if they wanted to move a figure just take it and move it all right or if they wanted to add in another figure they could just copy and paste it just right in and and put it wherever they wanted okay um i mean that that's one way to go uh, if you want to play around with the hyperlinks which i encourage you to do because it, i mean it just opens your mind to to all the different things you can do. It's such a powerful tool in the in these Google Apps, both in Docs and in Slides. Hyperlinks, man, uh, it's crazy. Um, you can play that way, just playing with one slide. Um, feel free to use these, uh, these vector images. I've created them myself using Inkscape. I love origami, that's a whole nother uh, issue. And I used origami figures because in the in the actual game the little wooden figures are animals. So I kind of wanted to to simulate that. Uh, again, at the beginning of the presentation, I have two slides. Uh, I'm just kind of talking about the game, both in English and in Spanish. A link to Board Game Geek, which goes into a little more detail about the actual board game. Um, notice that they should be skipped in the presentation. Just kind of notes for the teacher. Uh, so yeah, have fun with this one. It's a great game. Uh, requires you know attention, memory. Um, it gets kids uh, get, gets kids hyped up. Uh, depending on the, I mean, you can use whatever pictures you want. It's a great way to kind of have a, a first base touch um, with you know specific vocabulary. They don't have to be animals. They could be transports. They could be flags. If you're doing geography. Um, I mean, lots of possibilities there. Don't feel like you need to use the the animals. Uh, and yeah, have a go at this at this game. It's a real fun way to start the class. 10, 15 minutes, get kids talking, get kids engaged, and then dive into the content afterwards. Next up, we'll be talking about uh, me want cookies, galletas. Okay, so. Crazy Trails eh, is what I've named this new version, my version of this game called um, uh, Me Want Cookies or Galletas. In the first two slides, we have a, a link to Board Game Geek, which goes into detail about the original game. Um, so the way this game works is um, a card's flipped up. So there's three playing cards, right? And each card um, has the same six figures in different positions on each card. Uh, just random and then there's lines that connect one of the pictures with another one of the pictures again completely random I did this all um, hand-drawn and made my copies for uh, the classroom to be used in the classroom and then I remembered this idea from Danny which was actually using this game about how we could project the game and play as the entire class um, I won't go back into that um, so the game a smaller card indicates where and players should start on the first card all right um, players will go through will trace a line on the first card start at one um, figure or drawing and end at another and then where they ended here they'll start at that position on the next card follow it end at another face and uh, start at that face here and then finally end at another all right so all these slides uh, have different cards, different setups, and different starting points. So, for example, on slide six, <clears throat> uh, if we were to actually let's take a look at how this looks uh, presented because I put in transitions, okay? So that during the gameplay, what's going to happen is you'll project um, a slide at the front of the classroom. All the students will be ready to play, right? You'll pass a slide. And that will indicate where they need to start. They'll need to start with a sad face. So they'd follow 
the line and find that the sad face leads to a confused face. They locate the confused face, they follow the line, go back to a sad face, start at a sad face, and end at a scared face. All right, and so everyone, the first player, obviously you want to be the first player to arrive at this, this last um, element and shout out scared or whatever the answer may be, right? So when we go to the next slide, we get ready, pass, the starting point, we go angry to happy, happy to confused, confused to scared, right? scared. Now, the idea that Danny gave me uh, two years ago was that we could set up the classroom, move, move, move the tables, right? Let all the kids stand up in the center of the classroom, or you could have them in, set up by teams and kind of do a relay uh, type setup, and we would project the game at the front of the classroom. And we would locate, we, we would um, set out giant poster board versions of these six, uh, of the six pictures, whatever it is on the card, uh, around the classroom. So when they arrived to that last element, uh, instead of shouting it out, they could run around the classroom and, and grab it and be the first one to grab it, and, and they would win the point, obviously. So it's a great way to get kids, again, engaged, uh, moving. I love the game because it's six elements. You can play with those six elements to introduce specific content from whatever subject you're talking about. Again, I mean, it can be flags, it can be food, it can be, it can be whatever. Uh, I personally created this one with emotions. I created another one with transports. You can see here, okay. Uh, I even created another one with geometric figures. I personally like the versions with transports and with emotions because after we play a couple rounds, what I ask students to do is to kind of do a creative writing activity where they have to tell me a story. So let's see here. We start with the train. We go to the sailboat. From the sailboat to the car, to the car, back to the sailboat. So they would have to write a story about someone who went on an, on an adventure or on a, on a trip uh, where first uh, traveled by train, and then they traveled by sailboat, and then, then they traveled by car, and then by sailboat again. And the same, I mean, you can kind of do the same with the emotions. Tell me a story about a person who uh, was upset, they were angry, and then they were confused. And after they're confused, uh, you know, they were surprised. After they're surprised, then they were scared. You know, what, what types of things could happen to a person? Tell me that story. Uh, I mean, it's a great way to, to play with content, um, to kind of attack the, the competence level, not just the content, not just memorizing, but what can you do with that content? Um, so these are, these are the three games. Uh, I just like to point out that I'm probably going to be making a lot more. Um, any game that uses dice or cards, I mean, you can, you can make it with these slides and you can, you can use hyperlinks. You can use just slide after slide. Uh, I mean, it's, it, I've been thinking about it for a long time, so I'm not going to say it's easy, but once you start playing with these ideas in your head, you really start to get a vision of, of, how you can make versions of these games to be projected in front of the classroom so that all the students can play, um, you know, get them engaged at the beginning of the, uh, of the hour. Uh, I don't know. I see a lot of potential here. Um, feel free to visit the, my website and, and make yourselves copies of all these templates. Uh, I have everything up on the Internet anyway I like to share. Um, and, yeah, enjoy it. We'll see you at the Vindro game.